Hi, I'm Dee Stevenson. I'd like to share an entire case with you. This is a femto case. This is a fairly soft nucleus. And I use a, in this particular case, I use a pattern, a, 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 a particular femto pattern. I make a side port incision with an MVR blade. One thing I've learned, and I learned this from residents, is I mark my dime, I mark the metal blade that I use with a, with a purple marker. So you can see on the video, you can see on the video actually that I have marked my side port incision. I don't know about any of you, but when we're learning, and even we've ha when we've had great experience, a lot of times I can't find my side port incision. So this is very helpful. I make an incision, 1.8 um, to 2.2 incision, because now I'm gonna go in and take the free floating capsulotomy off. So I kind of do a dimple down um, technique where I make sure that it's, there's no adherence to anywhere in, to, in, on the capsule so I don't have any tags. Um, usually they're free floating and you can, and, and they're easy to do, but I'm kind of a creature of habit and I'm a safe, kind of a safety person. So then I hydro dissect and hydro delineate with a very little bit of power or pressure because you want to release all the gas bubbles because you don't want to have a posterior capsule rupture due to this. Now I use the Stellaris um, and um, it is uh, again a small um, tip. 1.8, it goes through. So what I'm doing is I put viscoelastic in first. So now I have, the pattern has cross hairs, if you will, or a Maltese cross, cross hairs with little cubes. So what I do is I actually go in with a second instrument and I do a little bit of a divide and conquer here where I go make a groove and then I'm gonna crack it and then I'm gonna rotate it and I'm gonna do the same thing again. So I make four quadrants out of this. And I, I kind of, I kind of like to be a little safe with these little uh, cubes and you can determine what kind of pattern you use. I don't use this cube pattern as much anymore, but this was the beginning of my femto career um, when I first started using this. So it was an easy one to do. However, you wanna make sure that those small little cubes don't bounce around on the endothelium and bother the, the endothelium. So you just kind of follow through. So what I've done now is I've gotten half of it out. So now I'm rotating it with my second instrument and I'm cracking it again and I'm allowing the, um, um, the uh, uh, cortical material, or I mean the, the, the nuclear material to come to my port. So I've, I've cracked it now and I'm rotating it for the last crack and, and now I'm going to do, uh, I put it in foot position two, so I'm gonna aspirate all those quadrants and some of the epinuclear rim comes along with that. So this is very control, a very controlled setting with a small incision, like I said, a 1.8 incision for my FACO uh, incision, and then the side port incision is made with an MVR blade. So you have, uh, the Stellaris is a very nice machine because it keeps a nice stable chamber. I don't have a lot of egress of fluid coming out, so it's very stable. Now this is um, uh, taking the epi, uh, uh, epimembrane, or epi, not epi, epi nuclear shell out with a FACO tip. You don't have to do it with that. You can do it with your IA, which is a little safer. Now this is a silicone tipped um, IA, and I kind of strip it and start and kind of pull things uh, tangentially towards the center to pull it out. Sometimes I start superiorly sub, sub incisional because that's kind of the hardest to get out. But with FACO, with FEMTO, it's a little, the cortex is a little different. So I do it in a circumferential fashion. And um, I can actually lay this silicone tip on the capsule itself and it really, really causes little, little damage, or if anything, it, 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 it has a, a silicone tip before the metal is in the IA, so that it's very safe if it does suck up some posterior capsule, it will not, it will not tear it. So again, now I'm going for the sub-incisional cortex, which comes out quite nicely. And again, I polish all capsules because I think that it's important to uh, have, I don't like doing capsulotomies once you have a, uh, you know, uh, YAD capsulotomy, I mean, once you have a, a, a retinal detachment from one, you're very, I'd like to not have to do it. So I polish very nicely so um, the lens does, the bag doesn't contract or doesn't have um, uh, fibrosis. Now I'm opening the wound um, to 2.2 with a metal blade and I'm gonna use the Invista lens. Now the Invista lens is a hydrophobic acrylic lens. It opens fairly slowly, so you have time to be able to insert it into the eye, then make sure both the trailing haptic is in the bag, and then I warm my viscoelastic to allow it to open, and I rotate it into the bag and make sure it's very well centered. Now, I'm an Aura user, um, Aura with Verify Plus, and the lens opens slowly, so if you're a person that does 
or if you end up using Aura, if you're a person that does, um, or you have to wait for the lens to open in the, in the visco, warm viscoelastic helps it open better. This is a beautiful lens. Again, aspheric, centers just beautifully, um, has vaulted uh, uh, haptics, so very little capsular fibrosis occurs. I'm Dee Stevenson. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something.